Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations. So in this first video we're going to talk about what are quadratic equations and then how do you solve quadratic equation by factoring. So in this section we're going to study a variety of methods on how to solve a quadratic equation. And quadratic equations are equations where the highest exponent on the variable is 2. So we've talked about linear equations. That was x raised to the first power was the highest power. Now in this section, we're going to talk about quadratic equations. So they have many different methods on how to solve, and we're going to talk about one of them in this video. So quadratic equations. A quadratic equation in one variable x is an equation that is written in general form. Now we're going to talk about many different forms. This is called general form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. The a, the b, and the c are just real numbers, so they can be fractions, decimals, whole numbers, negative numbers, and so on. The a cannot be 0, otherwise you would not have an x squared term, which would make it a linear equation instead. And so a quadratic equation is a second degree polynomial equation in x. So like I was just saying, if a is equal to 0, then you would have bx plus c equals 0, and that is what's called a linear equation. The highest power would be 1 on the x instead. And the a, the b, and the c are sometimes called coefficients. So here's a couple examples of what a quadratic equation might look like. So for example, 3x squared subtract 5x plus 1 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation because the highest power of x is 2. And notice that the equation is written in general form already. So general form, the equation is equal to 0, and all the terms are on the opposite side of the equation. So once the equation is in general form, then we can identify what the a, the b, and the c are as the coefficients. So a is always the coefficient in front of the x squared, so it's 3. The b is always the coefficient in front of the x, so it's negative 5. And c is the constant term, so it's 1 in this case. Okay? Another example of a quadratic equation might be this. Negative 5 is equal to x squared subtract 3x. So this is a quadratic equation. But notice that the equation is not in general form yet because the equation is not equal to 0. Well, how can you get this equation to be equal to 0? You can add 5 to the right side of the equation. And so the left side will be 0 equals x squared subtract 3x plus 5. So now this is a quadratic equation in general form. And so now we can identify the a, b, and the c. The a is 1 because it's 1x squared. The b is negative 3 and the c is 5. So be very careful on how you label the a, b, and the c. If it's not written in ax squared plus bx plus c order, you might want to rewrite it so that the x squared is the first term, the x term is the second term, and the constant term is the last term. That way it's a, b, c. Okay, so again, general form, or sometimes people call it standard form. I'm going to keep it consistent with the textbook and the homework, and we're going to call it general form. General form will always look like this of a quadratic equation. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and the a cannot be 0. Sometimes you may have to simplify an equation to figure out it's actually a quadratic equation, and sometimes you may have to simplify an equation to make sure it's actually a quadratic equation in general form. So, for example, simplifying the quadratic equation, we're going to rewrite these equations into general form or standard form. So, for example, Let's start off with this equation. 2 times the parentheses, w squared subtract 2w, and that is equal to 5. Well, you notice that there's a w squared term, and that's the highest power on the w is 2. And we don't have to use x, you can use any variable. But the highest power is 2, which makes it a quadratic equation, but it's definitely not in general form. So what can we do to simplify? Well, we can distribute. So if you distribute the 2 through the parentheses, you'll have 2w squared, Subtract 4w is equal to 5. Well, it's still not in general form. Notice that the equation is not equal to 0. So to get general form, you need to subtract the 5 
with the other two terms of the equation, and that will give you the right side of the equation is equal to zero. So 2w squared subtract 4w subtract 5 equals zero. This is a quadratic equation in general form. Well, in later videos, we're going to figure out that the identifying the a, b, and the c is very important. So the a is 2, b is negative 4, and c is negative 5. Once the equation is in general form, then you can identify the coefficients. So let's try another example. Let's try out this example as z times z minus 1 is equal to 3z. So again, this time we notice that z is only raised to the first power, but it's not simplified yet. So we can't tell if it's a linear equation or a quadratic equation until it's simplified. Well, let's use the distributive property again. Take z times z, you get z squared. And then you take z times negative 1, and you get negative z is equal to 3z. So now notice that the highest power on z is 2. So it is a quadratic equation, but it's not in general form yet. Notice that the 3z is on the opposite side from the other z term. So let's rewrite this. z squared subtract 3z will make it negative 4z is equal to 0. And so the equation is equal to 0, and all the terms are on the opposite side of the equation. Well, even though that this does not have a constant term, it's still a quadratic equation because the highest power is 2 on the z. and it's in general form. So let's figure out what the a, b, and the c are. a is always in front of the variable squared, so it's 1. b is always for the first degree term, so it's negative 4. And the c doesn't actually occur in this equation, but it's 0. So this gives you an idea of how to rewrite or simplify equations so I, to identify whether they're linear or quadratic equations. And then if, they're, if they are quadratic, rewrite them so that they can become in general form. So we're going to finish up this first video by talking about our first method on solving quadratic equations. You can solve quadratic equations using various methods. The first method that uses general form is what's called factoring. And so we're going to review factoring so that we can use it to solve quadratic equations. So a quick review on factoring. Factoring a polynomial is expressing a sum of monomials. Now monomials means you have one term only for a polynomial, and it means you find an equivalent expression as a product. So in other words, you take a polynomial and you rewrite it into a product of factors. So the most important factoring methods used in this section are factoring out the greatest common factor. We're going to talk about what that is. And then also factoring trinomials. So here's an example of a quadratic equation in general form, and we are asked to factor, to solve. So for example, we're going to factor 3x squared, and we're going to hit several different factoring techniques in one problem. Subtract 72 equals 0. So we're not going to solve the equation, we're just going to factor now. Well, the first step is make sure that the equation is quadratic, and it's in general form. So it is. It's a quadratic equation. And notice that all the terms are on one side and zeros on the other, so it is in general form. You can't start solving a quadratic equation using factoring unless the equation's in general form. So now let's start factoring. The first step in any factoring problem is to look for a greatest common factor, or a GCF. What is the largest factor that will go into all the terms? So notice that the first term has a 3 in common with the second term and the third term. 3 goes into 72 and 30. You cannot factor out an x because not all the terms have an x in common. So with the GCF, you factor out the GCF as 3, and then you have a set of parentheses for what is left over after you factor out the 3. And make sure the equation is still equal to 0. So if you take a 3 from 3x squared, you still have an x squared left. If you factor out a 3 from negative 30x, you still have a negative 10x left. And if you factor out a 3 from negative 72, 
you still have a negative 24 left. So this is what's called GCF factoring. You factor out the GCF from each of the terms. So now notice that what's left over does not have any common factor left other than one. So this is what's called a trinomial. And so the next step is to factor the trinomial. So a polynomial with three terms is called a trinomial. And so keep factoring as far as possible or factor completely. You need to find two numbers that add to negative 10 and multiply to negative 24. So that's how the trinomial factoring works. You're trying to find two factors that multiply to the constant term, negative 24, and the same two numbers, the same two factors, need to add to the, the middle coefficient, the coefficient in front of the x. Well, there's only two numbers that will work. So notice that we are going to reverse FOIL by finding out what factors will work. So one of the parentheses gets an x, the other parentheses gets an x, and now we, don't, we want to find out what factors will work. Well, the only numbers that will work that will multiply to negative 24 and add to negative 10 is negative 12 and positive 2. And the other side of the equation is still 0. So notice that you have one factor is a linear factor, x minus 12, and the other factor is a linear factor, x plus 2. So that's as far as you can factor with this equation. So let's stop here. Let's try a different problem. So we've seen factor by GCF, and we've also seen factor trinomials. Let's try 4x squared to track 36 equals 0. We're going to see a, another type of factoring method this time. So notice that it's a quadratic equation because the highest power is 2. And it's also in general form because all the terms are on one side and the opposite side is equal to 0. So let's do the first step again. Find out if there's a greatest common factor. And there is. 4 is in common with the first term and the second term. So the GCF that we're going to factor out is a 4. And so now look at what's left over from each term in the polynomial. So you take out a 4 from 4x squared, there's still an x squared left. If you factor out a 4 from 36, that means you have a factor of 9 left. So now let's try factoring what's remaining, see if it factors even further. This polynomial is in a special form, what's called a difference of squares. So notice that the first term is x squared, and the second term is 3 squared, to give you 9. So this will factor as 4 is a GCF, make sure you keep it, and it's x plus 3, and x subtract 3. And the other side of the equation is still 0. So whatever the first term is that's being squared, that's your first term in each of the set of parentheses, or the factors, and what is being squared to give you the second term is 3, it's plus 3, and the other one's opposite of 3, so negative 3. A good way to check yourself with factoring problems is to multiply it back out. If you multiplied it, you should get back to the original equation. Same thing with the first problem. So now that we know how to factor, how do you actually solve quadratic equations using factoring? Because we didn't solve the equation, we just factored so far. If a quadratic equation has 0 on one side of the equation, and the other side is in factored form, or factored expression, then you can use what's called the zero product principle. And here's what it says. If the product of two algebraic expressions is zero, so in other words, if you're multiplying two expressions together, two factored expressions, and the product is zero, then at least one of the factors is equal to zero. So here's how you can write it out with, in terms of equations. If you have the left side of the equation already factored, and it's a times b, note, and a and b are algebraic expressions or factors, and the right side of the equation is zero, then one of these factors, either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So here's how you can use it. Let's go back to our first problem that we had when we were factoring. 3x squared subtract 30x subtract 72 is equal to zero. 
So again, notice that the equation is a quadratic equation and it's in general form. Well, the first step that we did was factor out the GCF, which was 3, from all three terms. And we had x squared, subtract 10x, subtract 24 remaining, equals 0. And then we factored the trinomial, and we found out it was 3 times x subtract 12 times x plus 2 equals 0. So once you have the quadratic equation completely factored, as we did before, you set each of the factors equal to zero because the only way you can multiply and have an answer of zero or a product of zero is if one of the factors was zero. So three equals zero or x subtract 12 equals zero or the last factor x plus two equals zero. Well, of course, three can't be zero, so ignore that. And this was using the zero product principle To be able to solve the equation and find out what value of x will make the equation true, you have these last two equations. x is equal to 12 after you add 12 to both sides of the equation, or x is equal to negative 2 when you solve the last equation, x plus 2 equals 0. So notice that a quadratic equation doesn't have just one solution, you have two solutions. And that's as most of the solutions you can have, is at most two for a quadratic equation. So that means if x is equal to 12, that means if you plug it back into the original equation, you'll have a true statement. You'll have 0 equals 0. If you have x equals negative 2 and you plug that into the original statement, the, reg the original equation, it will also be true. So let's summarize what we found out by solving quadratic equations by factoring. First, make sure that you rewrite the equation, if necessary, to general form so that the equation is equal to zero on one side of the equation. That's very important. One side of the equation must be zero before you start factoring. So it needs to be ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So by moving all the terms to one side and the other side of the equation needs to be zero. Once that's true, once it's in general form, then you need to factor, but also factor completely. So that means factor out any GCFs that's possible, factor any trinomials, or factor any special products. Once you have one side of the equation factored completely, then you can use the zero product principle to set each factor equal to zero. That contains a variable. Once you have that step finished, then you solve the equations from the previous step, and then always check your answers with the original equation. So example one, we're going to solve the following quadratic equations using factoring and the zero product principle. So number one, x squared is equal to negative 11x subtract 10. So notice that this is a quadratic equation because the highest power on x is two, but it's not in general form. So rewrite this into general form. Let's keep it positive x squared. So let's move the other two terms to the left side of the equation. So add 11x and add 10 so that the right side of the equation gives you zero. So now it's a quadratic equation in general form. Okay, so let's try factoring. Is there any GCF other than one that's in common with all three terms? No, all the terms only have a one in common. So this is a trinomial, so there's three terms. Let's try the trinomial factoring method, which means we are going to reverse FOIL, and one set of parentheses will be X, and the other set of parentheses will start with an X, and we need to figure out what two factors will multiply to positive 10, so the product is 10, and the sum is 11 of the two factors. Well, the only numbers that will work will be positive 10 and positive 1. They multiply to 10, and 10 plus 1 gives you 11. So we've completely factored the polynomial, the left side of the equation, to be x plus 10 times x plus 1. Now you can use the zero product principle to set each of the factors that contains a variable to zero. So x plus 10 equals zero, or x plus 1 equals 0. And now solve the resulting equations for x. So x is equal to negative 10, or x equals negative 1. And again, notice that you have two solutions. So that means if you substitute in x equals negative 10, or x equals negative 1 into the original equation, 
the left side and the right side of the equation will give you a true statement. Okay, let's try another problem. Number two. 2x squared subtract 7x is equal to 4. So notice that this equation is a quadratic equation because the highest power on x is 2 again. But again, it's not in general form. So to make sure it's in general form, one side of the equation must be 0, and the other side of the equation needs to contain all the terms. So it's subtract 4 to the left side of the equation. So 2x squared subtract 7x subtract 4 equals 0. Now let's see, does it have a GCF? The GCF needs to be in common with each of the terms, and there's no common factor between 2, 7, and 4, and not all the terms have a variable. So this is a different type of trinomial. You have not just one x squared like the last problem, you have a 2x squared. So this is what's called trinomial factoring using the AC method. So you multiply the A and the C coefficients. So 2 times negative 4 gives you negative 8. So now how does this work? How does the AC method work to factor trinomials? You need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 7. So it works very similarly as the trinomial factoring as we had before. We are trying to find two numbers that multiply to the constant term, and the same two factors need to add to the middle coefficient, the coefficient in front of the x. Well, the AC method is used only if the coefficient in front of the x squared is not a 1. So notice it's 2. So you take the a and the c and you multiply. So 2 times negative 4 gives you negative 8. And now it works very similarly. You find two numbers that multiply to negative 8 instead, and the same two numbers need to add to the coefficient in front of the x. You keep the, middle you keep the first term the same, but you rewrite the middle term to the two factors that work. Well, the two numbers at work is negative 8 and x, and the other factor that works is a 1, so 1x, and keep the last term negative 4 the same, equals 0. So notice that we found two numbers that multiply to negative 8, negative 8 and 1, and these middle terms, negative 8x and 1x, can add to give you negative 7x. So you're rewriting three terms into four terms by using the two numbers that work, negative 8 and 1. Okay, so we haven't factored yet. Let's keep going. You have 2x squared subtract 8x plus x subtract 4 equals 0. Well, you have four terms this time, so this is what's called four-term factoring, or sometimes people call it grouping. So anytime you have four terms, try the factor by grouping method, which means that you take the first two terms and you group them together in parentheses. So 2x squared minus 8x are grouped together, plus between the groups, and you group the last two terms together. x minus 4 is grouped in parentheses, equals 0. And now you factor by GCF within each group. So notice that the first group, the first set of parentheses, has a 2x in common with both terms. So if you factor out a 2x from the first term, you'll have an x left. If you factor out a 2x from 8x, you'll have a 4 left, so x minus 4 left over. And the second group doesn't have any GCF other than 1, because x is not in common with both terms, and 1 and 4 only has 1 in common. So let's just keep it x minus 4, and make sure it's still equal to 0. And now what you should notice with AC factoring and also by grouping is that there is an x minus 4 in common with both groups, or both terms. So we're almost finished with factoring. You can factor out a GCF of x minus 4 because it's in common with both terms. And now let's see what's left over. You have a 2x from the first term. And the second term, if you factor out the entire factor, you have a 1 left over. And the right side of the equation is still 0. So this is how the trinomial factors completely using the AC method and also grouping. x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. So now, once the left side's been factored completely, 
Now you can use the zero product principle, x minus 4 equals 0, or 2x plus 1 equals 0. So now solve each of these equations, because now they are linear equations. x equals 4, or x equals subtract 1 first, then divide by 2, so negative a half. And again, notice that you had two solutions instead of just one with a quadratic equation. Okay, let's try one more problem. Number three. This time the equation is 10x subtract 1 equals, in parentheses, 2x plus 1 all to the second power. So again, notice that this is going to be a quadratic equation, but we have to simplify it first, and we have to make sure it's in general form before we can start factoring. So we have to multiply 2x plus 1 times itself because it's being squared. So the left side will stay 10x minus 1. The right side of the equation will be 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. And we're going to have to use FOIL to multiply it out with the four multiplications. So that means we're going to have 10x minus 1 is equal to 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. After you FOIL and combine like terms, now let's try moving all the terms to one side so that the equation is equal to 0. Let's try to keep it positive 4x squared. So let's move the 10x to the right by subtracting 10x and add 1. So 4x squared, subtract 10x, will make it minus 6x. And then add 1 will make it plus 2 equals 0. So notice that there is a 2 in common with all three terms. So you can factor out a GCF of 2. So 2 is factored out. And let's see what's left over. The first term would be a 2x squared. The second term, there would be a minus 3x. And if you factor out a 2 from 2, there's still a factor of 1, so plus 1. So now we have a trinomial inside the parentheses, and it's not just 1x squared, it's 2x squared. So you're going to have to use AC method again to figure out how does this inside of the parentheses factor. If you use the AC method, you'll find out it factors as 2x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. So use the AC method here to be able to factor as 2x minus 1 times x minus 1. Once the left side of the equation has been factored completely, you're ready to use the zero product principle. 2 can't be 0, so ignore it. But 2x minus 1 can be 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. You have two solutions after you solve the resulting equations x equals 1 half, or x equals 1. So two solutions once more. So notice that in these three examples, we talked about factor by grouping, factor by AC method, factoring trinomials, and also factoring by using a GCF, a greatest common factor. If you have any questions about factoring, or if you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving quadratic equations using the square root property and also completing the square.